Hi there, I'm Tony Grant, and this is Learn English with Tony. A weekly podcast to improve your listening skills and grow your English vocabulary. Join me for a new episode every Friday where I'll give a short talk on a theme and explore a few interesting words and phrases for you. I've been noticing a strange online development lately. Over the last few weeks, my Twitter feed has been filled with suggested posts of animal videos. You know the sort of thing. Cats and dogs doing funny or cute things, generally being weird and hilarious. I don't know why the Twitter algorithms have decided I like watching cat videos. I did refuse personalized ad tracking in a recent app update. So maybe cat and dog videos are what you end up with if you remove your own interests and tastes from the algorithm. Who knows? The strange thing is I don't even have a pet. I'd love one, to be honest. A dog or a cat. Although I must admit I'm more of a dog person. But unfortunately, my building doesn't allow pets, so I've got no chance. Central Tokyo probably isn't the best place in the world to have a dog, though, especially not one that needs space to run around and fetch sticks and balls. It's a bit too much of a concrete jungle for that. It turns out I'm actually not unusual for a British person in my liking for dogs. A recent survey by the Channel 5 TV station asked 2,000 British adults what their favourite pet would be. How many do you think chose dogs? Have a guess. The answer is 51% of them, more than half, and just 38% chose a feline friend. That word feline is the adjective we use to talk about cats, and for dogs we say canine. I suppose that survey result is not surprising really. As we have an expression in the UK, we say a dog is man's best friend. In fact, it's often said in general in the UK that we're a nation of animal lovers. I find that an interesting idea and one that's worth exploring a little bit. I wonder if it's really true and whether it's always been that way or whether it's just a popular idea that has developed out of the culture over the last few decades. Well, I'd say it's certainly true on the whole that, as a nation, we don't like cruelty to animals. Cruelty means activity or behaviour that causes physical or mental harm. According to Wikipedia, the first ever law to prevent cruelty to animals was introduced in Britain in the year 1822 and was aimed at protecting cattle. That means cows and bulls, in case you haven't come across that word cattle before. People must have liked that law because just two years later, in 1824, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or RSPCA as it's commonly known, was created. Believe it or not, that was a full 60 years before a similar society was created to prevent cruelty to children. Now, obviously British people don't love animals more than children, but that is a remarkable bit of history, isn't it? But I do think if we look a bit deeper into our love of animals and pets, the picture gets a little bit darker. For one thing, many of those popular breeds of dog that people love so much are the result of long processes of breeding that have created genetic abnormalities and lifelong suffering. For example, did you know that Dachshunds, those cute little dogs with a long thin body like a sausage, usually suffer from serious spine problems? And many pugs and bulldogs, with their cute little noses and flat faces, struggle to breathe. If we all knew such things, would we still buy them? and create a demand for more and more strange and interesting breeds of dog? Perhaps not, but who knows? After all, we know that elephants are an endangered species, 
But that doesn't seem to stop some people buying things made of the ivory from their tusks. Another complex issue is the question of which animals we're preventing cruelty to. Of course, we want our pets to eat nutritious food to keep them healthy and lively. But a lot of this pet food is made from other animals. And those other animals are not always kept in good conditions. It seems we're comfortable with the idea of keeping one set of animals in industrial factory conditions whilst treating another set as full members of our households. It certainly is a complex issue. I think, on balance, the British really are a nation of animal lovers. But like in so many areas of life, there are a lot of contradictions and we have a long way to go before we truly live up to the way we'd like to think of ourselves. So let me finish by asking about your country. Are you a nation of animal lovers? What are the cultural norms about pets and animals in your country? And what would be your ideal pet? Okay, I guess I'll go back to watching Twitter's latest round of crazy cat videos. Talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to Learn English with Tony. If there's a topic you'd like me to talk about in a future episode, just send an email to learnenglish.mobile at britishcouncil.org. And remember, stay safe, everyone. Oh.